<clears throat> hello, hello, welcome to the start of Summer Ween. In this video, I will be doing a vlog. Um, I haven't done one of these in a really long time and I'm really, really excited. I will be participating my first time in Summer Ween. I have seen this readathon go around pretty much since its birth <laughs> and I have yet to participate in. The thing with readathons is that as a mood reader, it is just fundamentally so hard to like force myself to be in a certain mindset. But the thing is with this readathon, it's just so, so flexible and just so accessible. I've been just putting it for too long and decided there are no excuses. I will be joining firmly, forcefully this year. So this readathon was created and hosted by my good friend, Gabby over at Gabby Reads. Hi Gabby, shout out to Gabby. So yeah, I'm so sorry Gabby that it's taken me this long to participate in, but this year, this will be the year where I pop that Summerween cherry. So the whole goal, the whole objective for this readathon is to read a spooky horror thriller book during the summer season, summer holiday. Anyways, the readathon runs for about a week and there are some prompts, you know, you'll have to complete all of the prompts or finish all of the books as well. I mean, for my TBR, even though it is a relatively easy readathon, I only have three books in mind, give or take. And I'm really excited because I haven't read a good thriller in a long while, participated in a readathon, or even vlogged in a while because in my community tab and even over on Instagram, I asked you guys, what are some videos you wanted to see from me? And the majority of you guys are always like, ah, oh, please do more reading vlogs, more vlogs in general. It's gonna be chill, it's gonna be fun. And also this is kind of perfect because I am working with Skillshare for today's video. And it's exciting because one of the classes that I'm taking was created by another good friend of mine, Carrie. Obviously you might know her from Carrie Cakes or Carrie Can Read. She essentially created this class going over the points and the fundamentals of creating a vlog here on YouTube. And I was like, this is perfect because I have heard from other creators about Skillshare before. I mean, pointers from another fellow creator about YouTube vlogs that I have officially met a few months ago back in Korea for the first time. Carrie is an absolute angel and sweetheart. She also has another class as well, going over just being a YouTuber in general, all the fun things like behind the scenes, organizing, organization, expenses, and all that. So if you didn't know, Skillshare is one of the largest online learning community for creatives. They have so many classes ranging from graphic design, photography, drawing, arts, editing, you name it, they have it. They essentially have thousands, a plethora of classes to choose from, ranging from all sorts of levels from beginner to advanced. Just so many classes in countless different categories. All of the classes essentially are created and designed by creatives. And one of the really cool things about it is with all of the classes, you can completely go at your own pace. And this is perfect because this is another thing you can add to your summer bucket list. You know, wanting to explore or expand that new creativity side with just the abundance of so many new things you can learn from Skillshare. Especially as a fellow creator, myself learning from another fellow creator with a few different pointers, you know, with just a different perspective, different fundamentals. So the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive one month free trial of Skillshare. You can definitely get started today, cross off some of those objectives off of your summer bucket list. Once again, everything will be linked down below and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. All right, with that being said, I'm gonna quickly go over my TBR before we get into the vlog. Obviously, the first book that I will be hoping to read and finish will be Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I know very little about this aside from the fact that the main protagonist, the main character this time, is a man. All of the past main characters from Riley Sager's books have all been women. He has been a little iffy, you know, writing female characters in his books, so we shall see. I heard that this will be the last book before he goes on hiatus. He did say that before he came out with this one, so not too sure how 100% true that is, but we'll see. I'm cautiously optimistic about this one. The next one is What Lies in the Woods, and this has been on my TBR for quite a while. This one deals with a horrific accident involving three girls who put away a man for life in prison after a horrible incident involving one of these girls getting stabbed and surviving that encounter. I am getting a little bit of Karen Slaughter vibes from this one. Last but not least, we have A Flicker in the Dark. All I know about this one is that it's about this young woman who has to deal with the current events that tie back with her past. Obviously, of course, as it goes without saying, in most thriller books in most cases. But yeah, that is my formal TBR. I'm hoping my goal is to complete at least one book. I know that we have a week, but knowing me, <laughs> we shall see. Pira, say hello. Hi. Hello. Alfredo pasta with orzo. I almost at Trader Joe's the other day and I was like, I gotta try it. Fresh Atlantic salmon. Jumbo shrimp. So we'll see how this goes. Secret ingredient for sure.
Obviously, I need lactate, otherwise I will fucking die. It's alright. Hello everyone, it is the next day. Did I get any reading done? No. 7.30 in the morning. I wanted to show you guys breakfast that I made. You also can't forget about the oranges. Diluted mango juice. It's a better look at breakfast. I'm currently editing. Update, update, hello, hello. It's Monday. I mean, it's on brand for me at this point. Didn't do any reading for the whole weekend. I was, it was just very chill. All I did honestly was get high and watched a bunch of anime. I'm obsessed with um, Tsukimichi at the moment. Tsukimichi, I think that's the name of the anime. It's sort of like this fantasy reincarnated anime isekai where this guy obviously goes into a fantasy world. I watched Maxine over the weekend as well. And you know what? I have, hmm, I have mixed feelings. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. We're trying to do so much with it, trying to cram a lot of different elements of thriller, mystery, horror, slasher. And it just, for me, didn't fully work out like 100%. It was fine. It was a good, solid movie, but easily for me, the weakest out of the entire trilogy, if you didn't know what Maxine is about. It primarily follows a character from the first movie called X. She's like this porn star and she's trying to make it into sort of like the more professional, serious side of Hollywood. However, her past sort of comes to catch up with her in this one and she has to figure out who's behind it, what's happening and everything like that. That is how my weekend went. Very slow and not productive at all. Oh, I'm also going camping this weekend, which is not part of the summer ween. Hello, quick update. <laughs> the hours later and no, I have not read anything. Got some leftover Thai food. Patsy, fried rice, watching Tower of God. I'm in episode three, I think. Lunch, dessert, break. This is um like sweet potato, like mochi sweet potato from like H Mart. Just pop them in the air fryer for like 15 minutes on 400. Sweet potato filling inside, the bit of mochi texture, really crunchy and crispy on the outside. Here. Say hello. Wow. Look at that sunset. I will be heading to um, the coffee shop to get more productive and read some thriller books because it is what, day day four or five of Summer Ween and I have yet to finish a single thriller book. Get back into, into the grind because I have been seeing <laughs> like vlogs from like other creators posting like their Summer Ween day one, day two, and you guys are all productive, which is great, you know? Couldn't be me, couldn't say the same. So hopefully a venture out to the coffee shop and all the apartments will will do some work. On my Kindle, I have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager, which coincidentally I'll also be um, talking about for the Literally Dead Book Club live show, which is next month. Also, I will be bringing What Lies in the Woods because I started this. I switched out my, my frames. Thought it made me look smarter. We are here! Um, I just opened the car door and holy mother of God, it is so hot! <sighs> I'm praying, praying that they have seating inside. Oh, ungodly! Um, Elias? Yes, please? coffee shop and I got some headway into some reading so I decided to split um, the two hours between the two books just so I can get a feel you know for each of the books 
Alrighty, this is more interesting to me than Middle of the Night by Riley Sager, surprisingly, just because the writing in here is just so dense, but in a much more emotional and elevated way. Whereas this one, um, the writing here is just much more straightforward, less nuanced, <laughs> I guess. This one is my first time reading from this author in general, but the writing, the quality is just leagues better <laughs> than Riley's. So that's surprising. I'm slightly hoping that there'll be sort of like a supernatural twist or supernatural elements for this one because I feel like there are so many factors in this one that sets up a better, I don't know, supernatural element to the story than if it were like a normal mundane, oh, it's not supernatural, it's just all in your head, you're just overthinking. I think that would be so lame, especially since he has done that, those kind of twists before in previous books. Like I really want him, by 50% into the book, I want him to just fully embrace the supernatural element. I think that would be really, really cool. I don't want it to be like a twist per se, but I want it to, I want the characters to acknowledge that, oh, they're dealing with a supernatural essence, entity or whatever. And I think that would be really, really cool. Again, I'm only 20% of the way through, so we shall see. From the little that I read from this, the writing here is just much more impactful than Middle of the Night, which is surprising. Trivia night. Do we get it? Yeah. Yes. Nice. I am reading in the dark. I am roughly 50-ish percent way through for middle of the night. Ironic since it's literally the middle of the night. It's almost 1 a.m. It's a little underwhelming. I think it's very mid so far. I'm hoping that it'll build up or pick up real soon because come on now, we're hitting 50% through with this thriller. I feel like he played it safe last book and I was hoping that this one would change up would change things. It's very tame. There's nothing inherently wrong with it or anything bad. I don't know, when it comes to his books, they're very easy to digest. They're very accessible. A lot of different tropes that are fun that he plays around with that are very familiar, but I don't know, it's getting a little repetitive and tiresome at this point. This is how I feel about middle of the night. I'm extremely tired. I will literally need reparations if this book continues to suck. Obviously, I don't want to give away, you know, all of my thoughts regarding this one because I will be talking about more of this in depth in a live show with Kayla um, next month for the Literally Dead Book Club. Are you serious? <laughs> Oh my god. We're halfway through the book-ish, and this 40-year-old man, mild spoilers, okay, mild spoilers. Tell me why this 40-year-old man, the main character, is googling on the internet. What are ghosts? He comes to the startling realization that some ghosts stay behind to haunt people. Literally, there's an emphasis. It says right here, and I quote, to get their attention, ghosts sometimes resort to that most cliché of actions. Pause. They haunt. Full stop, period. This is so cringe. This is just... Ugh. Riley, 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 I was giving you so much leeway. I was, you know, putting my expectations like low, down, not a zilch. And you come through with this? I feel like this is his last chance. If his book sucks, I, I'm done. Like literally, there would be no point in me continuing or reading his books anymore because they just don't hit the same. I feel like his last, last good one would probably be Lock Every Door. I don't know, the way the main character is acting, the way the audience is viewing this character, it seems like Riley's holding our hands and being like, oh, hey, listen, sometimes ghosts stay back and they haunt people. Ghosts. Haha, <laughs> I'm done. I'm going to bed. I I'm too tired for this. Good night. So it's the next day, second to last day before the readathon ends, and I am making dinner. This time I am making um, shin ramen right here, but I'm going to do it a way I saw on TikTok. It's sort of like a drier version, like without the spicy soup. Honestly, this is the best dry seaweed on the market. You cannot get this type of seaweed anywhere else. It's like thick and big and the quantity and the quality is just chef's kiss. Better than like H Mart or any other Asian grocery store seaweed that I've ever had. So top notch. And voila, these are the ingredients right here. Add the noodles. And of course, ramen etiquette. Always take out the crumbs. You always eat it or toss it in. Never ever throw away with the bag. 
There's no direct like measurements, so I'm just gonna eye it. Sweet soy sauce. And then you just mix it all together. It's done. Guys, this hack was so easy. Ooh, wait! That's actually really good! Plop that on top. The official weapon. We're gonna add in some truffle oil. Oh my god. Why am I single? Why am I still single? Mm. I truly always pull through. I always outdo myself. Every single time. Chef's kiss. So good. Like, the truffle oil, the rice vinegar, the sugar, the only thing missing is like the sesame oil, but this, this is so good. The fried egg, the fried egg hits. Megs, hi Megs, say hello. We're doing some sprints. I still get comments where people are like, you use a chopstick as a microphone as if it's a weird thing, but I'm like, guys, first of all, why not? Second, people use things as microphones all the time as well. Plus I'm Asian, and this, this works. Meg says, the sprints are sprinting. She would like to know everyone. Thank you for agreeing that my um, chopstick microphone is iconic and that it works, hi May. Oh, that does feel good.